Thanks so much for staying with us, everybody. The Mississippi Legislature looking at Medicaid expansion. The State House passing a Medicaid bill this week in past years, legislators and definitely the governor have been against any kind of expansion of Medicaid. Joining us with an insider look at what's happening in Jackson, Magnolia Tribune publisher Russ Latino. Russ, thanks for being with us. I would say as recently as six months ago, uh, this story would have been kind of a non-starter, but suddenly there's momentum in the legislature some version of Medicaid expansion may come out, not what the original was in 2011, but what do you think? Yeah, the, uh, the light switch flipped pretty quickly on this one. For the last decade, Republicans have resisted uh, expanding Medicaid under Obamacare. Uh, it really was a non-starter. We had an election in 2023 in which it was the number one issue in the gubernatorial election with Governor Tate Reeves being opposed to Medicaid expansion. And his opponent, uh, Brandon Presley, very much pushing for it. And uh, after Governor Reeves won, there might have been some thought that the issue was settled. Uh, but Republican leadership in both the House and Senate have signaled that they would like to see some form of Medicaid expansion. And so we're uh, we're one quarter into the football game, to use the analogy that you and I were just discussing off air. So uh, Jason White comes in as the new speaker, actually puts his name on this bill in the House, putting a lot of pressure on Republicans in the House who maybe weren't inclined to do so, to vote for it. It makes it through. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, I mean, the, the vote was overwhelming. I think it was uh, 96 uh, yay votes and 20 uh, no votes. All 20 of those no votes were Republican no votes. Uh, the bill essentially fully expands Medicaid. It, it lines up with the Obamacare Medicaid expansion uh, that was passed back in 2010 and that states started to adopt in 2014. Um, and so there, there is a attempt at a work requirement in the bill, uh, which I think is going to end up being one of the sticking points as this debate goes on. Um, but, but essentially it, it lines up with the same Medicaid expansion uh, that dates back to the, the Affordable Care Act. So let's now jump over to the, the other chamber over in the Senate. I've always felt Lieutenant Governor Delbert Hoseman was quietly receptive to the idea of Medicaid expansion, but what's happening in the Senate? Yeah, and, and that was the prevailing wisdom for quite a while was that uh, perhaps Lieutenant Governor was quietly receptive. Uh, his staff would frequently push back on that. You know, earlier this session, uh, he announced that he was, he was certainly open to it and that the Senate was going to, to do something on the issue. My sense is that the Senate bill, whenever it finally drops, is going to look very different uh, than the House bill in conversations with senators. And, and Lieutenant Governor Hoseman himself have made it clear that to the extent they look at expansion, it's going to be contingent upon an approval from the federal government of a work requirement. The House bill doesn't require approval of the work requirement. In fact, it says that if it's not approved, uh, full expansion will go forward. It seems like senators want to make sure that if they do anything on this issue, uh, that it only comes after there's approval of something that says, hey, you got to work if you want to get this benefit. Now, you, you, you've done a series of extremely in-depth articles on this, and, and you talked about some other states, Indiana, uh, under then Governor Mike Pence, by the way, I want to point that out to viewers, uh, Louisiana, Arkansas. What did you find those states ran into? Yeah, I mean, we've got 40 other states we could look at that kind of show the, the effect of these policies. I mean, what you see are, are a few risks that the legislature's got to weigh. I mean, one in every state that has done Medicaid expansion, the actual number of people who end up on the program is way higher than projections. The cost of the program is way higher than projections. And what you see is that essentially the people who get added to the Medicaid rolls end up competing with people that are already on the Medicaid rolls for access to care. The, the other thing that you see is a lot of people end up being dropped off of private insurance. Um, and so that's happened in Louisiana, that's happened in Arkansas. Louisiana had double the number of people they had projected, ultimately signed up for Medicaid expansion and their budgets doubled uh, since they did that in 2016. And so there, there are some concern points. Uh, I would say, you know, like in Mississippi, we've got 140,000 people that are on private health insurance that will be moved off of private health insurance 
onto Medicaid if full expansion passes. Okay, Ross, I have 30, literally 30 seconds left. Governor Reeves has basically built his entire <laughs> gubernatorial career on fighting Medicaid expansion. Is he going to roll up his sleeves? Is he going to veto anything that comes out of the legislature? If something well, I, comes I out? I give the governor more credit than to say that it's his entire uh, career, but he certainly has been staunchly opposed to Medicaid expansion. I don't see that changing. I mean, he's he's been very public as this conversation has gotten started, that he believes that this is a Democrat issue and that Republicans should resist it. Uh, I think very much so that if a bill gets to him that doesn't drastically reduce some of the risk that we've talked about, uh, that he's very likely to veto it. All righty, Russ Latino, Magnolia Tribune, on the inside in Jackson as Medicaid expansion is being debated. Appreciate it, Russ, thanks for being with us. Thank you.